Wow, that is a very long description. Going out, doing certain activities in the night. I absolutely adore this fragrance. I'll say it right off the bat in the diamond shaped glass bottle. As you guys, welcome back, guys. In today's video, I have a brand new spotlight video just concentrating on one particular launch. And this is one that I think I sampled in one of my last videos. It was like new releases of 2024 and honestly I had no expectations, I'll be real with you guys, I had no expectations whatsoever, I just came across that it had been launched as a new flanker of the original and I was just really curious, I was just thinking to myself well I have my thoughts on the original and I wanted to see how they've developed this specific flank to kind of either replicate it or make it a little bit better in any type of way. The fragrance that we're talking about today is La Nuit Trésor Le Parfum from Lancome. And this is the one, so I just have it in the just the normal packaging. I only went for the 30ml because I thought to myself, well, I know it's a beautiful fragrance, but do I really need a 50, 100ml? Probably not, um, since it is not so wearable on, on like a everyday daily occasion, but more so on maybe like a special occasion. And I'll kind of get into into why I think that later on. But I think the, the packaging is really pretty. So I don't know whether you can see, cause it, it's kind of concentrated in my face right now, but you have this purple velvet bow, um, basically the exact same as the Le Nuit Trésor, but the only difference being it's a little bit more purplish, as you can probably see. Luckily, I. I'm quite thankful that I got the 30 mil because I find when I used to have the 100 mil years ago, it was mahusive. I mean, th fitting that thing in a bag or anything, or even when I was traveling was just a bit of a nightmare. So that is the new bottle. So I think the first thing that we're gonna do is just read out the description from the brand. I always think it's interesting to see from a marketing perspective how they went about you know, launching this particular fragrance, what their idea was behind the fragrance, why they've included certain things. So here it says, the unique signature of La Nuit Trésor reaches a new level of sensuality and passion. Wow. With La Nuit Trésor Le Parfum. The most intense fragrance in the collection. Mm -hmm. This new scent is an elixir of rose absolute, wrapped in a note of bitter cacao extract and black currants. La Nuit Trésor Le Parfum is a subtle blend of surprise and the tenderness of long-awaited love. Le Parfum becomes every woman's most precious ally offering her moments of the utmost value and the secrets of the night, embraced within the elixir of rose absolute and bitter cacao notes. A new touch of black currant intertwines with hints of green and red fruit accords, interesting, adding light and woody notes to the woman's fragrance. New scent is presented in a diamond shaped glass bottle as you guys have probably already seen. Revealed sharp facets and powerful light reflections through a violet veil. The fragrance vessel is adorned with a velvet ribbon symbolizing elegant desire. Wow that is a very long description. Do you know what I think it's quite good that they've described it that way because um I definitely kind of get a few of the things that they've just said there and I will get into it shortly. What I find interesting is with every leading perfume that is launched by any house, the amount of flankers, you guys, is absolutely nuts. I mean, just look at, like, for example, Livia Bell or even like Shalimar from Galan. I mean, have we lost count on the amount of flankers that is out there? I think it's interesting to see what different brands think will happen when they're launching, you know, kind of new flankers of the fragrances. Is it just a cash grab or are they genuinely you know, just listening to the audience and looking to launch a different type of versatility or a different nuance of that particular fragrance. I'm not actually against any flankers whatsoever. In fact, there are a lot of flankers of main perfumes that I really, really enjoy. The only thing that I will say though, is do we need the sheer quantity? of? I, I feel like maybe a few Great. I mean, if you want to add specific notes or if you want to have a new nuance to it, absolutely. But as soon as you're going into the realm of like 
10, 15, 20, 20 plus, it's a bit overwhelming for consumers anyway. If you're a customer and if you really like a specific fragrance, and you want to have that fragrance, you want it to be continued. This is the only feedback that I have, by the way. I feel like I'm going on a bit of a rant here. Please, guys, let me know what you feel about flankers in general. Are you the same as me, where you don't really mind them as long as, you know, they have some nuance to, to it and as long as they're not discontinued, like literally a year later? Um, yeah, just let me know what you guys think down below because I'm actually quite curious. So let's just jump straight into the actual fragrance itself. So I'm just going to spray a little bit in the open here for you guys because the actual opening is quite different to the dry down. So in the beginning, I definitely get like a bit of a soured black currant mixed with blackberry type of note. I know that they said that there was like red fruits in here, but quite honestly, I'm not really getting that. Like I'm not getting a raspberry, a strawberry or anything like this. To me, it's like a candied sour black currant mix of blackberry notes, which is actually really enjoyable. I quite love the juicy aspect of it and the dark fruity vibe of it. Um, I think if it was any other fruit or a berry in general, I think it would lose its character. I'm quite happy that they included that black currant, blackberry type of soured vibe to it. I think it really adds to like the whole gourmand experience of this fragrance. And then towards the mid of this fragrance, that's when it really starts changing a lot. And I absolutely adore this fragrance. I'll say it right off the bat, you don't have to watch the entire review if you don't want to. I think that this is a fantastic flanker of La Nuit Tresor and I'll explain why. The mid of this fragrance goes into this very rich velvety Damascan rose. It's absolutely beautiful, has this powdery rich buttery quality to it and it really adds to the elegance of this fragrance. It really adds a whole new dimension to this fragrance and I really enjoy it. On top of that, you definitely have a huge note of cacao. And this cacao isn't like the original La Nuit Tresor. It's not that like tonic, overly sweet, vanillic, chocolatey type of vibe. This is very different. It's still gourmand and it still has sweetness, but this cacao is like an 80% dark chocolate. This is not a milk chocolate, this is not a brownie, this is no, no, nothing super sweet, right? So this is a very dark, powdery, dry, dusty cacao, and I really enjoy it. It definitely gives, again, another dimension to this fragrance where you first have the rich, sweet, juicy, candied berries in the opening. You then have this velvety, rich Damascan rose in the mid, and then you have this really absolutely alluring, bitter, powdery cacao note, and it elevates this fragrance. It makes it so elegant and mature, but all in the right ways. It's gourmand, but without being overly cloying or overly sweet, absolutely fantastic. So far, I'm really enjoying it. Ends with like that typical patchouli base note. Um, pretty much all of like the popular mainstream fragrances out there do have a supporting note of patchouli. I don't mind the patchouli in this because it's not overwhelming. It's not too mossy or too green or, you know, that weird wet type of patchouli vibe. It's just dry, nice, you know, standard. It's nothing crazy. But in general, what I think, the vibe that I'm getting from this particular fragrance it's like La Nuit Tresor has grown up and it's become a chipre, modern, elegant version, right? Less gourmand, less sickly sweet, less vanillic, more drier, chipre, classic, elegant type of vibe, and I absolutely adore it. It's almost as if it became, and I'm so glad that they put this ribbon on it because it really describes how this um, flanker has become the velvety, elegant, um, grown-up version of La Nuit Tresor. Now, I think most people might not like it because of that very fact. I think people are so accustomed to that very sick, sickly sweet, rich chocolatiness that you get in the original La Nuit Tresor that they might not like the dry, sheep type of quality that you get in the Le Parfum version. But, you know, I think it's great to have both fragrances. I think this one is perfect for maybe a more 
formal occasion as opposed to the original being more like a date going out doing certain activities in the night I came across really wrong but you know what i mean spouse or just i know going out with the girls having some drinks it's a bit more boozy this doesn't have that boozy gourmand quality as much as the original has but definitely leans more velvety rose dry cacao woodsy absolutely gorgeous honestly i would give this a solid eight and a half nine out of ten as far as flankers goes right and the what i absolutely love about this fragrance is the intensity of it original Le Nuit trezor for me when i bought it years ago literally when it first launched i bought the 100 ml um, perfume EDP version of it and it was a beast guys when I tell you when I was spraying the specific fragrance it would carry me everywhere everywhere that I would smell I would get the La Nuit Trezor DNA it was a huge beastly mode monster mode fragrance um since then i believe i don't know whether this is actually true or not but i have the feeling that it's been reformulated to me now whenever i smell the la nuit Trezor, um edp it smells more vanillic sweeter but almost more watered down so it doesn't have that beastly quality to it this on the other hand has almost that original intensity of the la nuit Trezor but without being cloying so that's what i absolutely love about this fragrance it has the intensity but not being overwhelming in any way and i don't think it will offend anyone either i would highly recommend it wasn't that expensive i think for the 30 ml i got it for 50 pounds which is all right i mean it lasts like a decent amount of time as i said it has great performance so yeah as i said would highly recommend this fragrance if you've not tried it already, please, please give it a go and let me know down in the comments down below if you've already tried it. So guys, that's it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed. As I said, I'm actually really curious to see what you guys, first of all, think about flankers and also what you think about this specific fragrance. Have you tried it? Do you want to try it? Or are you just like, do you know what? I already have the original. Why do I need this fragrance? And I hope you guys have a fantastic week. See you later.